The SpaceX Raptor engine testing has begun. The Starship hover test is coming up. Elon Musk stated on Twitter that the hover test of the Raptor engine in Starship will be on this upcoming Tuesday and will attempt to hover to 20 meters and move a little sideways. The next Starship, Mark 1, would attempt to hover to 20 kilometers, and Elon Musk has given an optimistic timeline for that to happen in a few months. SpaceX should also be doing a Starship update soon, and it should be after the hover test, so end of this month, and we'll learn more about the changes to Starship and hopefully what's next for them. Starship and the BFR represent a giant leap forward for human beings to travel into space for long durations and return. Compared to the Apollo command module, the larger capsules like Orion and Boeing's CST-100 Starliner are a big step up, with Orion able to carry up to four human passengers and the Starliner able to hold up to seven human crew on board. Starship is planned to bring anywhere from one to a hundred human crew members. And that's because the stainless steel Starship was designed to launch and land on other destinations like the moon and Mars. Granted, the other two spacecraft, Orion and Starliner, are farther along in their development. All that means for us is that we are gonna have a lot more fun watching the testing from SpaceX. They're preparing a hover test, as we talked about, Tuesday, and it'll get higher and higher each time. So really excited to see what SpaceX does. And most importantly, how they share it to the public so we can all see it. Now, because Starship is able to travel so far, it's also going to have on board a way to create fuel for a return trip. So for the moon, this could be achieved without having to make fuel while you're on the moon, although you totally could. And that's because they would fill Starship while it's orbiting Earth before it ends up going to the moon. Now for Mars, they would have to create fuel on Mars in order to launch from the surface and land back on Earth, which means most likely a uh, mission to the poles where water ice has been located, probably South Pole. Uh, if you haven't already, check out episode 145 on the Dear Moon mission to learn more about Starship and the BFR. Uh, LightSail 2 is now operational. It's taken an image from orbit uh, looking back at Earth, which you can find in a link in the this episode's description if you want to take a look more. LightSail 1 originally showed that it was possible for a solar sail to work. Uh, it did end up having issues deploying the full shoot and, you know, still accomplish it, its mission. LightSail 2 has already accomplished more than that first mission. So it's really excited to see what's next for Light Sail 2. We'll dive more into that. Uh, Hayabusa 2 landed on the surface of the asteroid Ryugu for the second time. This time, uh, it's looking to recover some soil for the return home. And at NASA, there have been leadership changes. Uh, both the first and second in command for NASA's Human Exploration and Operations Division have been reassigned to other advisory roles. Ken Bowersox, a former astronaut, has replaced William Gerstenmeier as first in command. Gerstenmeier has been the head of the division uh, in charge of human exploration and operations since 2005 and resigned shortly after reassignment. This means Gerstenmeier has been the head of the HEO division since after the shuttle disasters through its retirement and now uh, at the cusp of the commercial crew program and start of the Artemis mission push for 2024, he's leaving. So uh, I have no ill will for uh, against Gerstenmeier, uh, although I'm sure I could find people in the space industry that could argue that it's been stagnant in that time. I, I think he's kept it alive. Uh, I wish both... Gerstenmeier and the current NASA administration. I wish them both luck. I wish uh, Ken Bowersox luck while he attempts to achieve this really <laughs> short goal of five years to the moon with Artemis. I hope that since the change has been made, that the new leadership is ready to develop a culture and a team that, that can accomplish this feat in a short amount of time. They will really need to focus on their balance of science and engineering to make sure they don't get caught up in the bureaucracy of details and focus purely on accomplishing tasks and goals as best as possible in the least amount of time as possible. This means meeting deadlines that are set and getting the team at NASA all on board for the long road ahead the next five years. It's been a long time since NASA themselves were launching humans for the majority of Gerstenmeier's leadership Basically, there's been no 
actual launches from NASA. So uh, that are that are human related. You know, ever since the shuttle was retired in 2011, we have uh, NASA has not been launching humans. Uh, now that means the momentum is off for what NASA is ready for. So there's just a lot of work ahead, and I wish the new head of the HEO astronaut Ken Bowersox the best of luck. Uh, India's mission to the moon uh, is launching today as we're recording it, so we'll follow up on that next week. There's a ton left for space. Uh, we've got the rest of this month to go. I may be going to Houston soon, so I may be able to check out the Space Center and the the actual recreation of Houston Center for the Apollo missions. That would be amazing. So there's a ton to come, guys. I'm super excited about what's, what's left. Thank you for listening. So we're going to cover all of that very, very soon. Thank you again for joining us. See you next week.